They ruled the Earth for millions of years. From their fossils and footprints, we learned how they walked and hunted, how they lived and died. But there's one fascinating and intimate aspect of dinosaur life that we're just beginning to understand. One of the questions that people really want to know the answer to is exactly how dinosaurs had sex. With all those teeth and spikes, with their power and size, what was it like when they had Tyrannosaurus sex? We all know about the birds and the bees, but what about the Earth's mega beasts? How did they do it? Dinosaur reproduction has actually been something that people have been fascinated with for a long time. But, you know, it's kind of been under the covers, so to speak. I think a lot of people have the misconception that dinosaurs were evolutionary failures or dead ends because, you know, they did go extinct. But if you think about the fact that they were reproducing from 228 million years ago until 65 million years ago, it's a pretty amazing length of time to be successful. That's over 800 times longer than modern humans have been around. So they must have been doing something right. But what exactly and how do we know? Studying the mating behaviors of most present day animals isn't that difficult. Biologists long ago worked out how to observe wild courtship without ruining the mood. But what biologists can learn firsthand Paleobiologists have to deduce. One of the ways we, we answered questions about dinosaur reproduction is by looking at the modern relatives of dinosaurs, crocodiles and birds. They have a lot to tell us about dinosaur reproduction. Modern birds and crocodiles can help us with dinosaurs. All three share a common ancestry with a group of reptiles called archosaurs, which first appeared 250 million years ago. These close evolutionary ties suggest that many traits shared by crocodiles and birds today probably also existed in dinosaurs. So if we want to know something about dinosaurs, let's say something that's not preserved, like do dinosaurs see in color? Do crocodiles? Yes. Do birds? Yes. Because we know that both crocodiles and birds see in color, then we think the dinosaurs also saw in color. So by looking at these shared traits, scientists also begin to have some insight into dinosaur behavior. Like what, for example, would a potential mate see in a young male T-Rex? For one thing, some scientists now think that tyrannosaurs may have had some very fetching plumage. I could imagine that there was vestigial feathers on the head, perhaps the feet, perhaps at the end of the tail on these things that uh, you know, weren't for keeping warm. Certainly they weren't for flight, but were used just for a display sort of structure. And then there's his impressive physique. He's over 12 meters long from head to commanding tail. He's a meat eater, weighing in at around eight tons. And despite his size, his top speed is as much as 32 kilometers per hour. At 18 years old, he's about halfway through his lifespan and at the very peak of sexual maturity. It's gonna be something that's just gradually developing. It's kind of like with, say, young males. They go into adolescence, they begin to feel this urge, you know, they start thinking about girls a lot more than they ever did before. There's not anything conscious that's going on. It's just, it's there. And so I think that with the two Rexes, the male and the female, they're both gonna feel this urge. They just, you know, there's an itch that's gotta be scratched. But before they can start scratching, they have to find each other. If they're anything like birds, they'd have used a mating call. If you think about how birds interact with one another, male birds have a, a mating song. Not always, but most of them have a song they sing when they're ready to mate that only the male birds sing. Female birds recognize that male mating song and they sing a song back. A female answers with her own low frequency call. 
If you can send out a low frequency sound, it travels over huge distances. It's not impeded by trees standing in your way. It's not impeded by grass. It doesn't get dispersed as easily as a sound at our, at our frequency might. And so elephants use that to communicate with each other over very, very long distances. Large-bodied vertebrates like T-Rex, large-bodied dinosaurs probably did very much the same thing. A young male would be quite receptive to the sound. Inside his hunter's ear is an extremely large tympanic membrane. This gigantic eardrum means he never misses even a distant opportunity to meet a receptive female. As he gets closer, another one of his keen senses becomes active. From casts of the brain case of Tyrannosaurus rex, we know these animals had a great sense of smell. I suspect it could easily sense a, a large Tyrannosaurus approach. The T-Rex had two large olfactory lobes at the front of the brain, each roughly the size of a grapefruit, which suggests an extraordinary sense of smell. They also had a heightened ability to detect pheromones, the chemical signals animals release to attract potential mates. We could look to the cranial nerves that attach to the brain and we could tell uh, you know, whether these animals had uh, these particular senses. And, and we know that these nerves certainly existed. It's called the terminal nerve on the brain case of Tyrann uh, Tyrannosaurus rex. And so, so they certainly had some pheromonal sense. If we can sort of zoom back to this time, he and his potential mate have detected one another because of smelling, because of sounds. They have located each other in, in space, and they're coming together to meet one another. I can imagine that at that point, the initial point of actually seeing one another and being close enough to smell all the details of one another, that's when behaviors begin to kick in. Behaviors designed to signal how worthy a young male is. We've all seen the mating rituals of modern animals, Just imagine all that preening and strutting on a T-Rex scale. If you have a great set of feathers on your tail and you're a peacock, you're probably a pretty strong, healthy bird, right? And that's a signal to the female. So, so in my mind, it is those, those features, those behaviors, those special characteristics that signal to the female that a male is a healthy individual that will provide her with healthy, good offspring. As the male moves in closer, he begins to nuzzle her gently. That he'll rub against her so that she's aware that he's not gonna try to bite her. And we certainly see that kind of behavior with the Komodo dragon. The male will come and stroke the female's back. It's a sign of appeasement, it's a signal that I'm not going to bite you, I'm not going to eat you. Reassured, she lets him get closer. But then, as now, the course of true love never did run smoothly. If you watch, uh, you know, African animals on TV, you'll, you'll see that, uh, that there's often aborted attempts where the, the male will try to mount the female and, and, and she'll basically run off. After an unsuccessful attempt, it appears our female has changed her mind, so he'll have to start courting her all over again. But suddenly he's got a bigger problem. An older, more experienced male T-Rex appears on the scene. Two's company, three's crowd. This is not good. We already know from behavior of animals today that males don't particularly care to have a rival around during the breeding season. It can often cause a lot of trouble. Go to single bars, same thing. Get too many males around one female, there's gonna be trouble. And trouble is just what it looks like. This rival would probably go into a display posture, uh, one, to maybe attract the female and steal her away, but also to try to intimidate uh, this male with the hopes that he'll uh, wander off and then uh, leave the female to him. Even 68 million years ago, three was a crowd. First line of action isn't necessarily battle. 
It is usually posturing. No one wants to get hurt. The males circle each other, snarling aggressively and snapping their meter-long jaws. Almost all animals, when they're threatened, will puff up. You see the same thing uh, in, in lizards today. You see it in birds. This is sort of the universal signal that, hey, I'm bigger than you think I am. Let's say we've got two males that are equal in size, equal in stubbornness, and equal in being horny. They may have, in fact, gotten to the point where they start biting. The older male has had enough. He lunges forward and sinks teeth the size of steak knives into the young male's flesh. There are some indications among some of the dinos carnivorous dinosaurs of bite marks on the face. A handful of specimens do suggest that there were times when Nobody gave way, and they really dig it into a tussle. And it must have been a real sight to behold. As the two colossal males fight it out, the female watches from a safe distance, waiting to see which one will help her perpetuate the species. All over the Cretaceous world, the obstacles to sex were huge. But the drive to overcome them was even bigger and stronger. Then, as now, sex is one of the most powerful driving forces.